Hey guys, good morning and shalom. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of Coffee with Mr. Rutledge. Well, I was looking at the calendar and it's hard to believe, but today starts the second week of this last nine weeks, which means you've got about eight weeks left of the school year. After this week, we'll have seven left in the school year and it's flying by. Um, but I was typing in uh, some lesson plans early this morning and some late last night. And I kind of wanted to go through, uh, at least at least today, and reference you back to um, your, your lesson plans in RenWeb. But before I do, I wanted to read from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything be prayerful and have supplication with thanksgiving and let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, then dwell on these things. These things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. So practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So in Philippians 4, 6, Paul is telling the believers in the city of Philippi, do didn't, didn't not be anxious about anything. And we look at what anxiety is and how it manifests in our bodies and really a good test to see what you're anxious about if you are anxious about anything is to take a second and think about what's the first thing that popped in your mind this morning as you woke up, you know, and uh, you regained consciousness for the first time today. What was the first thing that came to your mind? And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to remember, but if you think about it tomorrow morning, if you think about it, just have that mental exercise of what, what consumes kind of like your subconscious thoughts and what's always running and kind of um, taking up that, that space in the back of your mind. That's what you're anxious about. And for some of us, it may be finances. For some of us, maybe health or relationships with parents or how our job is going or whether or not we're in the good graces of our boss or what have you. But um, that's what you're anxious about. And Paul says, don't be anxious about those things that you're just to let it go, that you're to offer supplications, you're to pray about those things and, and lift those things up in prayer that God would work his sovereign will through those things. But really, at the end of the day, you're, you're kind of just powerless um, and, and unable to control much of the things that we express anxiety over. Like, I mean, the news is right now is consumed with um, this coronavirus. And the reason why you're watching this video and not hearing me talk about this in person is because of the coronavirus. But Paul is commanding us not to be anxious about those sorts of things because really we are almost powerless when it comes to whether or not we're going to get that. We can take a lot of precautions and we can be really careful. Um, but, you know, really at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of out of our control. But we're to pray and we're to seek the peace of God. And... You know, the Hebrew word shalom, which you, if you're in my 11th grade Bible class, you're going to be studying this word. And you hear me say this word a lot, and you guys will say it uh, to me joking around. But shalom is so much more than just peace. Um, shalom is, is, is the destruction of, of chaos. It's um, the removal of those things which cause unrest. And uh, when we say shalom to each other, when Paul is saying um, that you will have a shalom that passes all understanding, what he's saying is that, um, the things that even cause anxiety in your, life, in your life will be completely and utterly destroyed. They'll be removed from your life and you will have peace from, from, from all sides. And I, and I hope that for you guys today. Um, let's talk about some things of what we're going to be doing, some assignments we're going to be looking at. Uh, let me start with 11th grade Bible. I'm going to have you guys read Ex Exodus 37. We're almost done with the book of Exodus. And um, you're going to answer a few questions in a Word document and then email that over to me. And this is all in Rinway, by the way, you can read. Number one, what was the significance of the menorah having seven branches? Why seven of all? And why not like 13 or whatever? Number two, uh, what is the middle branch called? 
Um, and you might have to do a little bit of internet searching to find this. It's not going to be right there in Exodus 37. And number three, what or who does the middle branch symbolize? Okay, and I apologize. My dog is right here and she's panting so you guys can hear it and you can laugh. Um, and then you're going to be reading uh, textbook pages 358 to 361. And it's going to be talking about evil and how we deal with evil in this world. Remember in our prior reading, the book said that everything that's physical is good. Everything that we can touch, see, smell, taste, it's, it's good. And God created it as such. But sin and evil has corrupted it like a cancer. And those things are being used in, prof in a profane way sometimes where they profane themselves. And that there's human evil and there's natural evil. Um, so if you haven't read that, I strongly encourage you to, to check that out. But that's going to be in uh, textbook pages 358 to 361, and you're going to answer your, the corresponding workbook questions associated with that. That's just today, okay? So make sure you go and look at RenWeb and see what's on the agenda for tomorrow as well. Let me talk about 11th grade history real quick. Um, you guys are going to be doing something a little bit different. And actually, this applies to 12th grade Bible as well. Um, you're going to be watching a video by a woman, um, she's being interviewed, her name is Edna uh, Register Boone, I believe is her name, and she's 100 years old in the video. She has since passed, she passed in 2011, but she's talking about her experiences growing up in rural southern Alabama in Houston County in the early 1900s, and she survived um, the, the flu uh, pandemic, the Spanish flu pandemic. She's going to talk about that, and you guys are going to answer some questions associated with that. Just type them up as a Word document and then email that Word document to me. After you watch the video, I want you to answer number one. In your opinion, how long does it take significant events, a significant event in history to be forgotten from the humans, human consciousness? And number two, in the video, Miss Edna stated that she just knew she had a duty to help preserve the lives of others as she was raised in a Christian home. What is, the, what is your duty if the COVID-19 pandemic uh, continues uh, where did I leave off? I lost my place. Continues to get worse, and how are you called to serve? And why do you feel it is incumbent upon you to serve? Number three, today, the focus of teenagers is largely entertainment and socialization. Uh, summarize in one or two words, um, summarize in one or two words, what was the focus? Uh, I typed this without enough coffee in my system. What was the primary focus of um, Edna during her youth. And then number four, using Google Maps, I want you to tell me how far your house is from the town where she grew up. And then number five, we heard Edna talk about drawing water from a well, heating her home with wood, etc. What are three major differences between her lifestyle back then and your lifestyle today? All right, and you're going to type that up as a Word document and just email it to me. Well, guys, make sure you go to RenWeb. That, that last assignment applies to um, 11th grade history and 12th grade Bible, okay? Because 12th grade Bible, we're talking about history right now, and um, we're looking at uh, eyewitness accounts and how history begins to fade over time from our collective memory, right? And um, so you guys are going to go to um, RenWeb, check that out, and then email me or, or whatever else. If you still need a book of any kind, it's really important that you email me and let me know. G. Rutledge at northsidenights.net. Um, I think I've got everybody except one guy, and um, we're going to try to rectify that this week. Guys, I hope uh, you've appreciated these videos so far, and you have a wonderful week. It's hard to believe that um, we've got about eight weeks left of the school year. And if you need anything, um, you know, just shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to help you. But have a wonderful and blessed week. Shalom.